Welcome to Episode 1 of The Poems of Our Climate, a poetry podcast. Produced by myself, Christopher Smith. All poems have been selected from the Norton Anthology of Poetry, 3rd edition. I will begin with the Wallace Stevens poem from 1942, The Poems of Our Climate. 1. Clear water in a brilliant bowl, pink and white carnations. The light in the room more like a snowy air, reflecting snow. A newly fallen snow at the end of winter when afternoons return. Pink and white carnations, one desires so much more than that. The day itself is simplified. A bowl of white, cold, a cold porcelain, low and round, with nothing more than the carnations there. 2. Say even that this complete simplicity stripped one of all one's torments, concealed the evilly compounded, vital eye, and made it fresh in a world of white, a world of clear water, brilliant-edged. Still one would want more, one would need more, more than a world of white and snowy. Sense. 3. There would still remain the never-resting mind, so that one would want to escape, come back to what had been so long composed. The imperfect is our paradise. Note that, in this bitterness, delight, since the imperfect is so hot, in us, lies in flawed words and stubborn sounds. The next poem is by Robert Frost and was published first in 1928. West Running Brook Fred, where is North? North? North is there, my love. The brook runs west. West Running Brook, then call it. West Running Brook, men call it to this day. What does it think it's doing running west when all the other country brooks flow east to reach the ocean? It must be the brook can trust itself to go by contraries the way I can with you and you with me. Because we're, we're, I don't know what we are. What are we? Young or new? We must be something. We've said we two. Let's change that to we three. As you and I are married to each other, we'll both be married to the brook. We'll build our bridge across it, and the bridge shall be our arm thrown over it, it asleep beside it. Look, look, it's waving to us with a wave to let us know it hears me. Why, my dear, that wave's been standing off this jut of shore. The black stream catching on a sullen rock, flung backward on itself in one white wave, and the white water rose the black forever, not gaining but not losing, like a bird white feathers from the struggle of whose breast flecked the dark stream and flicked the darker pool below the point, 
and were at last driven wrinkled in a white scarf against the far shore alders. That wave's been standing off this jut of shore ever since rivers, I was going to say, were made in heaven. It wasn't waved to us. It wasn't, yet it was. If not to you, it was to me in an annunciation. Oh, if you take it off to Ladyland, as were the country of the Amazons, we men must see to you the confines and leave you there, ourselves forbid to enter. It is your brook. I have no more to say. Yes, you have to. Go on, you thought of something. Speaking of contraries, see how the brook in that white wave runs counter to itself? It is from that in water we were long, long before we were any creature. Here we, in our impatience of the steps, get back to the beginning of beginnings, the stream of everything that runs away. Some say existence like a pirouette, and pirouette forever in one place stands still and dances, but it runs away. It seriously, sadly, runs away to fill the abyss's void with emptiness. It flows beside us in this water brook, but it flows over us. It flows between us to separate us for a panic moment. It flows between us, over us, and with us. And it is time, strength, tone, light, love, and even substance lapsing unsubstantial, the universal cataract of death that spends to nothingness. And unresisted, save by some strange resistance in itself, not just a swerving, but a throwing back, as if regret were in it and were sacred. It has this throwing backward on itself so that the fall of most of it is always raising a little, Sending up a little, our lives run down in sending up the clock. The brook runs down in sending up our life. The sun runs down in sending up the brook. And there is something sending up the sun. It is this backward motion towards the source, against the stream, that most we see ourselves in, the tribute of the current to the source. It is from this in nature we are from. It is most us. Today will be the day you said so. No, today will be the day you said the brook was called West Running Brook. Today will be the day of what we both said. The third and final poem in this episode is Wine Bowl, published in 1931 by the author known as H.D. I will rise from my troth with the dead. I will sweeten my cup and my bread with a gift. I will chisel a bowl for the wine, for the white wine and red. I will summon a satyr to dance, a centaur, a nymph, and a fawn. I will picture a warrior king, a giant, a naiad, a monster. I will cut round the rim of the crater, some simple, familiar thing. Vine leaves, or the sea swallow's wing. I will work at each separate part till my mind is worn out and my heart... In my skull where the vision had birth will come wine, would pour song of the hot earth, 
of the flower and the sweet of the hill, thyme, meadow plant, grass blade and sorrel, in my skull, from which vision took flight, will come wine, will pour song of the cool night, of the silver and blade of the moon, of the star, of the sun's kiss at mid-noon. I will challenge the reed pipe and stringed lyre to sing sweeter, pipe wilder, praise louder the fragrance and sweet of the wine jar, till each lover must summon another to proffer a rose where all flowers are. In the depths of the exquisite crater, flower will fall upon flower, till the red shower inflame all with intimate fervor, till men who travel afar will look up Sensing grape and hill slope and in the cup, men who sleep by the wood will arise, hearing ripple and fall of the tide, being drawn by the spell of the sea. The bowl will ensnare and enchant men who crouch by the hearth till they want but the riot of stars in the night. Those who dwell far inland will seek ships, the deep Sea fisher, plying his nets, will forsake them for wheat sheaves and loam. Men who wander will yearn from their home, men at home will depart. I will rise from my troth with the dead, I will sweeten my cup and my bread with a gift. I will chisel a bowl for the wine, for the white wine and red. Thank you.